Hello and welcome to some Tunnels Up training. Today we're going to talk about the diamond model of intrusion analysis. And this is going to be a very high level overview, um, just enough to get you comfortable with the topic, but not really enough for you to start applying it into your threat intelligence uh, research. So basically it's a uh, developed by the intelligence community and that's like the US government intelligence community. Um, this was probably used for quite some time, but it became declassified, I think, in 2013. Um, and it, it serves it to aid the cyber threat intelligence teams for, you know, during their research to try to figure out who's doing what and why. And there's this uh, URL here, which is the official release of it. And I highly encourage you, if you want to learn more, uh, go to this document and download it and read it because it's going to it's going to give you that next step of understanding what it is and paint that whole picture for you. So this is what it looks like and uh, it actually is really simple looking but it's kind of complex and difficult to actually use in practice. So think about it, uh, it has these four points adversary, uh, capabilities, victim, or infrastructure. And what, what we're trying to do is understand what the threat was in our network um, and fill in these blanks. So we can see that the you know, if we follow some of these lines, we can see the adversary develops certain capabilities and then that gets uh, deployed through certain infrastructure. Infrastructure could be um, a network port or a USB stick or an email. And then that connects to the victim, um, you know, which, which then ex gets executed or whatever. So, like I said, we try to fill in these gaps, or this is kind of a question, question game of, you know, what were these things, and let's try to fill in the answers to them. So let's take a, uh, just a kind of a sample, um, a sample malware situation and try to apply it here just to give you a better understanding of how, how this gets applied. So we'll talk about Stuxnet, and Stuxnet was a, um, an attack on an Iranian nuclear enrichment facility and basically that used an attack against industrial control systems uh, that were created by Siemens. And then it, um, it, the, the adversary put the attack on a USB stick because the, uh, the centrifuges and stuff were on a, uh, not connected to any sort of network. They're air gapped. And so you had to be at the facility in order to uh, actually get this infected. And so they were put on USB sticks. And then that, um, well, we know who the victim is. So now that we know these things, we can start filling in these gaps, right? We see now that the TTPs or the techniques, tactics, and procedures were four different zero-day vulnerabilities. And it, the target was, you know, specific ICS uh, that Siemens made. And then those were put on a USB stick. And then the victim is the Iranian nuclear uh, enrichment facility, but we still see that the adversary is blank here. And so now we have to start, you know, using some hypotheses to figure out why, who that would be and why they would do it. Um, but, you know, it could be anyone now, but now that we start looking and seeing how can this possibly, you know, take place, then it kind of narrows things down. So think about who would have the ability to have four different zero-day vulnerabilities that were specific to Siemens industrial control systems. Well, you could think maybe Siemens might have that capability or some very advanced um, threat, in threat intelligence communities, like very advanced researchers. Um, not many people in the world would have four vulnerabilities on, a, on specific ICSs. So already we have eliminate you know, most of the world, and so now we're only talking about highly funded people or, or groups or, or specific insiders. And then you know, when we look at the, the victim being a, a nuclear enrichment facility, well, I doubt it's going to be anyone from Iran that would have attacked Iran. That just you know, is, is less likely because they're putting themselves in danger. So you, know, you start looking at who's the, who's the enemies of Iran and then start formulating some hypotheses there. So let's go over some hypotheses. So at first we thought maybe China would be behind it because, well, China's behind all the attacks, right? And so once you start thinking, why would China be behind it? That kind of anchors you and you try to prove why China is it. And so one, one early theory was um, India had launched a 
satellite called the insat 4b i think and so that had the exact same siemens industrial control system on board that was targeted for this uh, specific stuxnet attack so people thought maybe it was it was targeting that and who would have targeted that? Well, China and India are in a space race right now, and so just for national pride's sake, China might be saying, let's, let's take out India's satellite, and this is the way we can do it. And so they would, they would have the actual capability to do that. Um, you know, there's also Areva. Uh, Areva is a company in France that is very much like Siemens, builds industrial control systems. In fact, so much like it, I think uh, Siemens sent them some decent uh, cease and desist orders and some lawsuits to say, stop what you're doing. But the thing is, is that 90% of Areva is owned by France. And so, you know, both France and Areva probably got pretty angry when they got these um, lawsuits from some from Siemens and maybe had some ability to retaliate. If, you know, they, they had some pretty smart engineers at Areva that knew these Siemens industrial control systems probably pretty well and did some a lot of you know reverse uh investigations on it or whatever and probably knew some some exploits on it so it was very possible that france could do this um of course there's us and israel mostly because they're enemies to iran and they wanted to show that iran was doing some nuclear enrichment and maybe you know embarrass them in some way or another and then there's uh germany was actually a leading um you know, one of the first that Iran actually blamed what and that's because, well, I would probably blame it, too, because when something goes wrong, I like to blame the vendor first. And so when you what the Siemens is the vendor and Siemens is headquartered in Germany, then it's possible that Germany and Siemens work together in some fashion to uh, develop an attack or build some back doors or have some zero days uh, you know, ready for something. And so Germany may have uh, executed some of those zero days in order to, um, I don't know, look good for the West or become a strong ally to the U.S. or something like that. Uh, it actually turned out to be U.S. and Israel, but this is the way we start formulating some hypotheses on how we can develop our adversary. That's definitely the hardest part of uh, working out the diamond model is getting the adversary, and that, t that takes quite a lot of practice and, and you know possibly six months to a year in order to figure it out. So then we can use the uh, diamond model in conjunction with the cyber attack kill chain and some other things too, but we'll just go over this. Um, so the cyber attack kill chain is a, is a thing that was developed by Lockheed Martin. And it basically explains the life cycle of an attack on your network. So an attack goes, you know, at first, you know, they do re reconnaissance against your network and then they weaponize or, or formulate a plan and then they deliver the attack and then hopefully that exploits, and, you know, it, it executes uh, an exploit in your network and that sticks and then that gets installed. And then um, there's command and control. So once the exploit gets installed or the malware or virus is installed, then what should it do? And that's where command and control comes in. Um, and then whatever it's going to do, that's the execution part. It could be delete all the files or upload all the files or infect the thing with ransomware. And so what we can do is apply that diamond model to every step of the kill chain. And it starts really painting like a, a, a much bigger picture for who's doing this and why are they doing this? So we like to start at the last step, which is execute. And you can, you can say, okay, so who was the victim when it was executed? Well, it was, uh, you know, the target was the industrial control system and, you know, specifically Iran. Um, in the case of Stuxnet, but um, but that would be maybe a different victim when we're talking about the exploit. Maybe we're talking about a Windows machine, how to get into that. And then um, maybe it was delivered through a different way, like such as a USB stick. So um, the victim, the uh, adversary, the techniques change from different, st every step of the kill chain, it may change. And so we, we start filling in the blanks for all four corners on every step. And once we have those as much as we can, then we start seeing a higher level of confidence of how the attack took place and who did it and why and what mechanisms they used and all these different things, which may be important to your organization. So there you go. That's, um, that's what the diamond um, model is used for. And that's how it, how it works. I hope you learned something and thank you for watching.